Check this bad boy out. It's the first 3D printed ceiling fan lithophane to ever be created, and I'm very happy with how it turned out. If this video gets enough shares, subscribes, likes, and comments, then I'll add another tool to lithophanemaker.com to make this type of lithophane easily designed and actually better than the one that I show you here. Now meet the mastermind behind this lithophane, my daughter. What princesses do you want? Um, they built and um, 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 I want princesses, two princesses, and I want, um, 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 uh, I want, um, 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 I want Belle. You like this one right here? That one. Okay, we'll do it. Do you mm -hmm. want Cinderella on your light? Uh -huh, Cinderella. You want that one? Huh. Okay. Do you want Elsa on mm -hmm. your light? Elsa and Anna? Uh huh. And I want um this one. How about this one? Do you like this one? Mm-hmm. That one. Do you want this one right here? I want that one. I want that one. I want that picture. How about trolls? Do you want trolls? Uh huh. And I want that one. This one? Uh-huh, that one. Okay, we'll get that one. Are you excited about your life? Mm -hmm. I go get those. So you heard the lady. I have my marching orders. I know which pictures she wants on her ceiling fan lithophane. So now it's time to make the ceiling fan lithophane in lithophanemaker.com. So the first thing you do is you go to the website. And me, I'm going to log into my account. So now I go down to the circular lithophane maker. So I'm going to go there. I'm going to upload the picture that I am using for this portion of it. I'm going to make this circle here a little bit larger. I'm going to scoot the circle over to the left. I'm going to take the hoop off so there's no hoop. Now I need to make the radius plus the frame width equal to half of 250 because I want the diameter to be about 250 millimeters. Um, so if I make the radius 120 and I make the frame width 5, then I get 125, which when you double that is 250. So I'm going to make the frame height 7. I'm going to reduce the maximum thickness to 2, which is typically an absurdly low number. But again, I want to let more light get through and it may make it so that the image is not as clear but the main functionality of the ceiling light is to light up the room so I'm gonna take the risk there, we'll see what happens and I'm going to make the minimum thickness 0.5 now I have an estimated file size of 123 megabytes I'm gonna make that closer to 200 because that's about what my uh, slicer can handle without having problems so see. So I found the magic number and now I'm going to create the STL and of course please be sure to like everything related to lithophanemaker.com and cite lithophanemaker.com and you bragged all your buddies about the awesome stuff you make. And now I save that. I'm going to extract it and here is what is inside of the extracted file. Now I go to Cura just as a reminder, make sure that under Preferences, you have Slice Automatically Off to make things faster. So I just dump the STL file in there. And it's thinking, 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 thinking. I'll let you know when it's done. This is a big file. So the circular lithophane finally loaded into Cura, and I just rotated it up so that I will print vertically. I just use the same settings that I normally do, except I also include support and I only use support that touches the build plate. I just hope it doesn't fall over. Um, I haven't had any trouble with these ever falling over before but this is a really tall one with a very thin base compared to its height so we'll see how it goes. You know you just uh, hits prepare and then it slices and then you print it. So now we need to design the rest of the lithophane and to do that I'm going to use the curved lithophane maker so I simply go there and I upload all of the other pictures so now they're all in there and I've got a 360 angle I'm gonna make the frame width 5, frame height 5 
picture spacing of five I think would be fine. Now I'm going to change this to two, the same as uh, the other lithophane, this one, oh, this one point five. Now that I have all these other settings dialed in, I can adjust the height in order to get the X span, which in this case will be the diameter uh, that we want. Okay, so that's close enough. And now I have a huge file. So again, I found a number up here uh, that I need in order to get the estimated file size that I want. So now I just hit create. Boop, boop, boop. So now it's time to slice the next lithophane. You can see I pulled it in. I don't change anything. I guess I might as well take off generate support. And I just hit prepare and then get the G code and print it. So you can see the kind of light that we have in my daughter's room. I'm going to retain this piece right here and I'm going to use it as the method of holding up the lithophane that I'm putting up there. And I'll show you how I do it. Before I modify this circular lithophane, I want to make sure that it's good and it looks pretty good. Now I check out the shadow that it puts on the wall. And if you guys appreciate this video enough by liking, subscribing, commenting, sharing, etc., then I will have features in the design tool that allow you to control how much light gets through this. So make sure that you let me know whether or not you want to have this tool available. So here's the circular lithophane. Now I need to find the center of it so that I can cut a hole so that I can interface with the ceiling fan light. And I'm just going to kind of eyeball the extremes. I've lined it up with the print direction so it's kind of easy to tell where the extremes are. I just find the halfway mark right about here. I'm just going to put a little dot. Okay. Now I'm going to take the original light, I'm going to put it down, I'm going to find the center of the other one right there. It fits in there pretty snug, so I'm going to use that. It's a 7 16th of an inch diameter bit. Of course, before I drill with with either of these, I'm going to drill a smaller pilot hole to make the whole process go more smoothly. What do you think? Still look good? So clearly I'm gonna need to print another. This might tell you why most people use clamps when they're working on one of these. I thought that this would be such an easy drill that it wouldn't move, but um, I guess the blade here basically pulled the whole thing up and it ripped it up pretty badly. So we'll have to try this again. So after my little mishap with the drill press, I decided to make a small change to the circular lithophane. I just took all of my settings that came from the settings file that's output by lithophanemaker.com, copied them in so it's the exact same, except I changed the maximum thickness from 2 to 1.8. Um, I think it will make it so that a little bit more light gets through the lithophane and the room is a little bit brighter. And I guess we'll just see how it works. Oh, 
Well, that seems to have worked a whole lot better, but ideally we wouldn't have to make any of these adjustments to it. So again, if we get enough likes, subscribe, and comments, then I'll make a tool that designs these so that they don't have to be cut or glued together or anything. Like your new light? Mm, I really do. You really do like it? Mm, I very like it. 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 I very like it.